Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you for tuning into our program. We've got great things in store for you. I believe if you love your Bible, there's some things you want to know about it because there's a lot of dis- uh, suspense in the Bible. We've got the mystery of the gospel, mysteries of the kingdom of God. And we know that not very many people understand all of these things. Melanie, tell us about the mystery Babylon, Revelation 17. Amen. We look at this, and I think it's very informative, and I know you got the answer. Take them into it. Let's see where we go. Amen. Revelation chapter 17 is specifically talking about the judgment that is to come upon the great whore that sat upon many waters. And what we want to talk about in particular with this whore is verse 4, talking about the woman that was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a cup, a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And also the other scripture we want to bring out is verse 5 too. So stay tuned and we're going to tell you more about this mystery Babylon the Great that's written upon this whore's head. Okay, we're going to bring out some really great things this week. For those of you that are first time listeners or some of you all that has been listening to us for a while, I want you to get ready and get a pencil and paper, get our address a little later. I want you to write to us and ask us about the 12 DVDs and the 12 CDs that we've got, which are separate packages that we will give you that will help your friend, your pastor, even help you in your personal Bible study and help you to know things that I promise you, you will not learn anywhere else. Backed up scripture by scripture in your Bible and there's none of these things that are so ambiguous that they're not scriptural. We're going to bring it all out to you. Okay, we know that the woman, Melanie, in Revelation chapter 7, for those that have stayed with our program, is easily identified. Amen. This woman, we brought it out in Numbers chapter 5, how the woman is definitely uh, got this cup in her hand here in uh, verse number 4. Mm-hmm. And she's got the cup in her hand. It's a golden cup. And it tells you a little bit about the woman and the cup in Numbers chapter 5. This is where that whole idea starts at. The, the cup actually is got a lot of things that are against her. It's called sin. And it's full of sin. And, you know, if the woman in Numbers 5 had of actually repented, this would not be an issue. Right. But she never repents throughout the Bible. And the priest in Numbers 5 takes the dust out of the ground, out of the earth, in the tabernacle, puts it with holy water, and he ring, rings it out over the handwriting of ordinances that was against them. And then he rings it out in this cup. And she signs the bill that says, no, I am innocent. So she never repents. Now this goes through the entire Bible. And if you look up this woman, you find out that it's Israel who had married Jehovah in Exodus 24. Am I right, Michelle? Yes. Okay, we're going to take the people into the woman. Because throughout the Bible, if we brought this out, and I plan on doing it, the tradition of the elders. Yes. You people think uh, under the sign of my voice, oh, that was the cups and saucers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or the cups and their stuff that they were doing. No, that's what they did openly. Mm-hmm. But Jesus talked about the traditions that they did, which people did not know about. Amen. Like Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Yes. It talks Rulers about of the Sodom. Rulers of Sodom. Rulers of Sodomy. And then if you look also, you can find out that there's many other places in the Old Testament, which we won't go into today, but I can prove it, Mm -hmm. where they were totally into their sexual thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Israel today, that's what they're all about. Amen. But we're going to bring it out here about this golden cup in a minute. We're going to talk about this this scarlet-colored beast that they start off with over in Revelation chapter 12. Okay. You can kind of look at it there. And then we're going to tell you some events that take place after chapter 12. And we're going to bring out this scarlet colored beast who's got a lot of blood on her hands. Yes. You know, this blood shed here goes to Revelations 18 when they was guilty of all the blood shed upon the earth. Amen. And you know, blood shed is very, very big and there's a lot of blood shed. Like I said, Michelle, tell us Revelations 12. Tell us the important things here about the red dragon yes about the seven heads and ten horns Mm -hmm. revelation chapter 12 verse 3 it says and there appeared a wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having said 
seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And if you notice, this wonder is up in heaven with the great red dragon. And if you go to verse 9, it tells you that, or actually verse 7, it tells you, And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was it found place any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the devil, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And if you notice this dragon, the devil, had the seven heads and ten horns, and the seven head and seven heads had the seven crowns. Okay, one of the things that you could tell the people about this this vision here in Revelation chapter twelve is the fact that the seven heads they had crowns, but the ten horns did not. Right. right. So the formation of this beast completely does not happen until Satan is cast down to the earth having great wrath because he knows his time is short. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the ten kings will be formed in chapter 13 by his power when he comes forth as Satan cast down to the earth. He has great wrath. But now what are these seven heads? The seven heads are the workers of the, you know, what they call the blood, scarlet colored beast. What yes. is the beast? It's seven nations that go forth with war, and their intentions is to kill everything in sight. Yes. You might as well say that like World War II, World War I. Why is it you had two million soldiers and 60, over 60 million people killed? You know, this is what they're guilty of, a lot of bloodshed. We can see that rulers, evil rulers, if they're really evil, they need to come down. Mm -hmm. But, you know, little children, hospitals, schools, mothers and dads and elderly people have no reason to be killed. Right. You know, John the Baptist told the soldiers when they said, what must we do? He said, harm no man. Amen. Amen. But you look, and this is what this, this blood beast is, this scarlet colored beast is seven nations that go forth and by the time Revelations 12 gets here, they've got everything under their power, they've already come into existence mm -hmm. and it's called the New World Order. Yes. And, and one thing I like to mention, just to bring it to people's attention again is to see in Revelation 17, 3 where this woman or this whore is sitting, she is sitting on the beast and so remember we had stated many times and we'll tell you again the whore according to numbers chapter 5 we mentioned and also you can look the number up in the bible's trunks concordance 2181 and it's referred to as the jewish people as the spouse of jehovah who have turned away from god and committed whoredom and adultery against god and what is that happening today you look at israel and they're the center of even bible prophecy and you look at them today they're in the middle of everything so to say and they to me they run the world so to say for the most part and mm -hmm. so just remember Revelation 17 3 this whore or Israel is the one that is sitting upon this scarlet color beast and according to Revelations 13 also this whore is the is one of the heads that was wounded unto death and the dude and the deadly wound was healed and all the wo world wondered after the beast and so not only is she the whore but she is the head that was wounded Okay, she was wounded by the sword and did live, mm -hmm. and she was dead for 2,000 years, right? Yes. So Israel came back in 1948, supposedly, and everybody's wondering and marveling at this head of the beast. But she is one of the heads. It tells you plainly mm -hmm. she's part of the war. Amen. Mm -hmm. And this is what they've always been into. Now, people that might think, oh, you're prejudiced. You're not supposed to say that about God's people. Shut up and listen. Right. Okay? That's the best thing I can say. Listen to your Bible and stop listening to man. Amen. In the book of Josephus, you've got seven wars that he talks about there, mm -hmm. and that's only seven. Mm -hmm. Israel has always been into war. In chapter se chapter 4 of the book of James, what does it say, Michelle? It says, you lust in war, but you have not because you ask not. And you ask to consume upon your lust. So they war. He said, where did whence forth does wars come from? It comes from the members of your body, which is lust. Amen. That's what flesh is all about. So this is what we see going on today. And you find out that war is something that that's just what they do. Amen. But people don't understand this part. Melanie, in mm -hmm. chapter 5, it says that the woman is Mystery Babylon. How does she keep this stuff hidden and why don't people know it? 
Yes, Revelation 17, 5, this mystery is because she's behind the scene. And if you think about it, um, you put this beast together that she's riding upon, and you can even put that beast with Revelation 13, verse 4, how this <clears throat> dragon gave his power unto the beast, so to say. And therefore, it says, who is able to make war unto the beast? So think about it. This dragon gave her its power, so to say. And now it has all these demon spirits working with this whore, so to say, to be able to deceive people. People, um, enchantments and work this magic from behind the scenes because it's actual demon spirits that's working with the, this whore. Okay, let's talk about this a minute, uh, Michelle. You brought it out about the woman that rides the beast, and mm -hmm. you brought it out about Israel in chapter 13. People have no idea that Donald Trump's administration is totally 100% Jews. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. I have some good Jews friend myself. But the other part about this is Zionist Jews are totally different. This is a different sect. They control our country. They control Hollywood. They control Wall Street. They control TBN. Mm -hmm. And they control all of the major money things around the world. Yes. People don't understand the woman is Israel and she rides the beast. She rides all other six nations mm -hmm. including France, Japan, including England, Canada, she has all this power to control them because their politicians are totally in control. Right. Explain to the people what chapter 17, verse 1 says about the judgment and the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Tell them what that means. Yes, and it says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And if you notice that in verse 15, it tells you what the waters is. It says it's nations, languages, and peoples, and tongues. So it, it sh she's sitting upon this, these people, these nations. And then, verse 16, it talks about how the ten horns that thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. This is her judgment that he's talking about in verse 1. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Okay, you've kind of got into a part here that's, I'm going to have to explain this to the little people that they understand what this is. In chapter 17, verse 16, mm -hmm. it says that these 10 kings are going to destroy the whore. Amen. Yes. Why would they want to destroy Israel? Because it shows you that these 10 kings and these beasts, that they're actually part of her. Mm -hmm. Look what it says in verse 3, Melanie. You read yep. it. What does it say? Verse 3. 17, verse 3. 17, 3. Yes, this woman, it says that sat upon the scarlet color beast, who has, is full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So at this point, she's writing the seven heads and the ten horns. That's mm -hmm. the beast. Yes. And it also has the seven heads and ten horns. She controls it all. Yes. Well, why in verse 16 does she suddenly decide that, that this... this uh, these ten kings, mm -hmm. why do they suddenly decide that they want to destroy Israel? Well, I believe it's part of God's will because Revelation 17, 17, it says, For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the words of the okay, Lord. Okay, we're going to take it into another level now. Okay. Okay, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 20, we're going to talk about Daniel's little horn and how this plays into action. Because without understanding this, you'll never understand what we're talking about here. Many people today are listening to the Bible, but they don't have our other 11 copies, so it's hard to put all of this together. Mm -hmm. But you have to know the Bible very well to stay with this. In chapter 7, in verse 20, it talks about the seven what, Michelle? Read it to them. It says, And the ten of the ten horns were, that were in the head, and other, other which came up, and before them, now what did this other one that came up? Now, the, while you got them there, it mm -hmm. says the, read it one more time so they can get this. Okay, and of the ten horns. Ten horns. That were in his head. That was in his head. And the other which that, came up. Okay, there is one that rises up in their midst at makes yes. the eleven, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, tell us what else it says about him. And before whom 
three fell. Okay, in Revelation 17, 11, mm -hmm. and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Yes. yes. So this beast that they're talking about here is now he's the eighth. Yes. And he is of the seven. Yes. And he goeth into perdition. In yes. other words, he taking people now to hell and destroying them. Yes. Tell us what verse 24 says. It says, and, uh, and the ten horns out of his, this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings okay this is he that we're talking about in revelation 17 verse 11 he's the eighth and he's the little horn of daniel is what people call it right now what happens is if you look in second thessalonians 2 4 mm -hmm. it tells a story about this little horn yes this little horn He's jealous. He don't want anybody worshiping Israel. Mm -hmm. He don't want anybody lifting up anybody but him. Amen. He it is the master man. Yes. He's yes. the one that has risen up. Tell us what 2, 4 says, Melanie. Well, 2, 3, it says there shall not come except there be a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, the devil was cast down in chapter 12. Mm -hmm. He brings forth those ten horns, okay, yes. with the seven heads in Revelation 13, mm -hmm. and he also causes people to buy, sell, and trade mm -hmm. and take in the mark of the beast. But now he puts on flesh in chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Now you see him rise up putting on flesh, and Satan has now incarnate in Daniel's little horn. Right. You know what he says over there in Daniel 11, 37 and 38? Tell us, Michelle, what he said. This is a very, very, very important revelation. People need to know what this means, mm -hmm. and they need to know how to put the scriptures together. Yes. Boy, the devil doesn't like this. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Daniel eleven thirty seven. 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor re the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Okay, hold it right there. He magnifies himself above all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does he say that he's God? Yes. Okay, we look at Isaiah 65, 5. What does that verse say, Melanie? You know that verse mm -hmm. really well. Come not near me, for I am holier than thou. So they say they're holy anyway. Mm -hmm. What does number 16, 3 say, Michelle? They says, oh, you, we are the congregation, Moses. You set yourself up above us. Okay, We're they all think holy. they're holy as a nation. Mm -hmm. yes. They're actually, if you study eugenics or study the ideal of like skin color mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, they believe they're higher than any other race. That's why John Hagee never asked anybody to pray for him because that's a big insult to them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is why in chapter 13, they're worshiping the head that was wounded. They're yes. worshiping Israel as a nation. Right. But in chapter 17, Daniel's little horn comes along and he says, no, no, boys. That's no longer right Israel. Here. Don't worship Israel, but worship me. Now you're going to start worshiping me mm -hmm. or else. Yes. Tell Amen. us a little more. Take us on into it. Uh, I don't know, have we brought this out well enough? If well, we are, we can pick another topic. I think we, can we pick another topic just to show them about the whore, what was upon her forehead again? Remember it said the mystery of Babylon, mystery Babylon? Let's go to see in Revelations 18 what this whore, so to say, or how this whore is working, like where she's getting all her powers. And this is Israel we're still talking about. In Revelations 18, verse 2, it specifically tells you Babylon the Great has fallen. This is after the ten kings um, burn her, eat her flesh. It says Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils. And the, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornications, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Melanie, Acts, uh, actually, Revelation 18, 21 tells a great story about whenever this begins to happen. Mm -hmm. It says that all the merchants of the sea that's made rich with her abundance of her stuff because they travel in these nations out of chapter 17, verse 1. Mm -hmm. You can find out that all of these guys from these other nations that they travel from, you know, country to country dealing with one another. And they actually are merchants and merchant ships. 
I mean, A. Ryle Nassis, who Jackie Kennedy mar married, he owned big shipping lines, and they made him billionaires. And, you know, this has been going on for a long time. But the thing about it is, all them people that put their trust in money, mm -hmm. put their trust in great riches, and this is what Israel is all about today, they put their trust in this, and they throw dirt up in the air. Oh! Oh, our <laughs> such great riches is gone within an hour. Mm -hmm. God is going to cut it off, and they're going to destroy that. And those ten kings in Revelation seventeen sixteen are used of God to bring it to pass. But did you tell people who the ten kings are and that they are the people in Revelation 18? Yes, these are the great merchants. These ten kings are the great merchants. Okay, does, how does that fit in with Revelation 13, 16? 13, 16, let's go back there and specifically, oh, that's that no man can buy or sell except they take the mark of the beast. So that's when Satan is cast down in chapter 12, mm -hmm. okay? Now he's already got the new world order going because mm -hmm. he's con hit by this time. They've controlled or have conquered every other nation in the world, mm -hmm. but the 10, you know, specifically these 10 kings haven't taken over the commercial part mm -hmm. right so they come up in revelations 13 with the commercial part and they've got control of all of the commerce including the selling of food and clothing and mm -hmm. everything and now what happens to them they say no man not buy or sell except you take the mark we mm -hmm. want you to be a part of us agree to what we're doing and be a part of it and you can be one of us otherwise you shall be put to death Amen. Yes. And think about it, that mark is in the right hand of the forehead. And those that are going along with this mentally and putting their hand to this mentally are going to receive this mark. Anyone, if you read Revelations chapter 17, those who are in um, fornication or association with this whore are going to make drunk of the wine or the wrath of her fornication and are going to receive the mark of the beast for coming in communication with this whore. People underestimate the power that's going along with, so to say, Israel that's going across this land. Even many churches, they, they tell you support Israel, support Israel, and people have no idea that this Israel is the whore. This Israel is part of the ones that, that own all the money and even tells you in Revelations chapter 18, 12, and 13, they're the ones that have this cinnamon, in other words, these great riches, this oil and wine. You know what even talked about? Horses and chariots, wars and slaves and souls of men. Guess where it's coming? It's coming from out of this, this whore. It's coming from out of Israel. Okay, let's talk about how this is all kept secret because many people out there, Melanie is saying right now, well, I don't believe this or I would have heard this on Sean Hannity <laughs> and Fax News. <laughs> They're you know. part of the people who are intoxicated. Well, they right? own every network in the world, but people mm -hmm. don't believe you. Tell us, Michelle, what does Isaiah 47 verses 8, 9, and 10 say, mm -hmm. because they have an agenda, and they're very well knowledgeable in these things. They brought forth Harry Potter. In other words, it was another thing to cover the minds, make people believe, oh, there's a witch's broom out there. <laughs> and, you know, the little kids believe in the witch's broom. <laughs> you know, but this is nothing but a smoke screen to stop right. people from knowing, really, mm -hmm. that the devil is blinding the minds of people throughout the world through his sorcery and his lies. Amen. Tell us what Isaiah, quickly, 47, uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, and 10. Here, there, therefore hear now this, that thou art given to pleasures. Thou dwellest carelessly. Thou sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment and in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. And if you look up that word enchantments, it's 2267 in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance. And it says to charm a whole society. And if you go to 2266, it tells you how they do it through fellowship, through fellowshipping with them, getting in covenant with them, and, and um, being around with them. And whispering. Whispering magic spells. And that's what they do. They whisper magic spells just like Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And you're not supposed to know that. But anyway, the whole idea is this is what Mystery Babylon's all about. They control the commercial part of the earth. They control the political part of the earth. And they control 
the governing altogether. You've got chapter 18. You find out that that's all about buying and selling and trading. And they do all this government stuff through witchcraft, through sorceries, you know, through lies and enchantments, you know, through taxation, that they keep taxing you and taxing you and taxing you. This is kind of crazy, but that's what mystery Babylon is. Mm -hmm. Babylon is a mixture of evil spirits. It's a mystery because they know how to work these incantations and these spells that they work on television. And I told people before, in my opinion, this is me. You know, you've got half of the preachers in this country that base themselves up on what they say. You've got some of them are aware of it. They know what they're doing. They get mm -hmm. paid well to cast a smoke screen. And then you've got some that don't know what they're doing because they're under the power of this sorcery. Right. But you've still got these people that don't pay any taxes. You know, they've got their stuff out of this other country. I don't want to go there today because that's not really where I want to go. Mm -hmm. But you've got Hollywood, Wall Street, Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. and the Zionist preachers. They really control the religious part and the political part of this world. Yes, and just to tell you that it happened in the days of the Bible about how Simon the sorcerer, he had the whole city of Samaria bewitched with his sorceries yeah. thinking that he was a, um, a great man of God. And so just as he did it, that's what they're doing today. They're thinking everybody, oh, yes, these are the God's people. Oh, yes, they're holy and, you know, you better not come against them. Okay, Melanie, quickly, go ahead. You know, as we're sharing the power of sorcery and the power of mind control that's working with this whore and these demon spirits, I believe it's important for us to not take it lightly, even on today's message, and, and the necessity of guarding our minds and guarding our heart and watching who we fellowship with, watching who we listen to, and watching who we keep company with. And it's important that we're sealed in our foreheads with the Word of God. I believe it is sealed, Melanie, <coughs> important that we stay sealed, learning the necessity of keeping yourself, the necessity of learning how to keep yourself from these evil spirits and mind control, mm -hmm. I think is overwhelming and just a, a marvelous revelation. Amen. You learn to cast down imaginations. People have to learn to stay free from this. And there's a lot of Christians that are bound up in this and don't even know it. Amen. And I believe people need to lead, learn to protect their mind. You've got so many scriptures in the New Testament about mind control. For those that are under the sound of my voice, I want to encourage you to write to us if you'd like to know more about how to get 12 CDs of one hour each and how that they'll be a great start of your study program. You might want to get them for a friend that's out of state. If you pay us up front, and I have to ask you to... Help us with your carnal things if we give you our spiritual stuff. I do not sell stuff. That's not who we are. But I've come to the conclusion, if we're going to get these out to the people, it's going to take some help, and it has to be a body ministry. You guys have to help me. I love everybody, and I want to be a blessing to everyone. You know, for $120, I'll get, I'll get 12 CDs together that will be a blessing to you. If you don't have any money, I'll send you a free one if you write to me. I don't have the money to give all of these away, so I must have some help. And I believe you can do this. Uh, if you want to get $300 together, I'll send you 12 DVDs and 12 CDs, and you'll have a great collection of what's going on. And I don't believe you can buy these for any amount of money anywhere else in the world. Why don't you write to me? And I mean, and I'm, my name is Pastor Inman. You spell that I-N-M-A-N. And... Our address is 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. And that's Dayton, Ohio, 45404. These would make a wonderful gift, and they're a wonderful collection for your study. And I think you'll be able to find everything we put in here is totally biblical. There's no doctrinal issues here. So write to us at 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 454. Zero four. You can send a check or money order, whatever you'd like to do, and we'll get your order together for you. Thank you for listening to Pastor Inman at att.net. And the word of deliverance was shout Michelle and Melanie Bidimo. Have a great day.